Hello guys, my name is James, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Episode 5 of Moon Knight starts with Steven, as Mark, sitting in the psych ward office, unsure what's happening. It turns out the hippo god was all a hallucination. The reality, according to the good doctor, is that he's a patient at Putnam Medical Facility. As Mark starts to spiral, Arthur has him injected with a sedative. In doing so, Mark is whisked back to the inside of the asylum with the hippo god, Tarit. She's the Egyptian goddess of women and children. Tarit confirms that they're dead, after having been shot in the tomb. Her goal is to guide them through the afterlife. Or, the do it, as she calls it. Now, this trippy asylum is actually on a boat, which is sailing to Aru. This is the field of the reeds, an eternity of paradise. Before they get there though, Tarit takes out their hearts to weigh on the scales of justice. On the other side is the feather of truth. Legend goes that if the scales balance then your soul will pass into the fields. If it doesn't, well, they'll be thrown down into the underworld. No pressure. The scales continue to sway up and down. It appears that their hearts are incomplete so the only way to settle this is to discover more of their life and become complete uncovering whatever secrets they may be hiding. What ensues from here is a journey through the dark recesses of Mark and Stephen's mind. In the cafeteria, all the people Mark has killed happen to be sitting at different tables. As Mark confronts his past, the scales start to slow down. Stephen notices a little boy and follows him through a doorway to the past. This happens to be Mark's past, where he leads his brother through the forest with Dr. Grant, the pet name he's given to his sibling. Stephen follows the kids into a cave, where the water continues to rise. Now, Mark's brother drowned in this cave and he's blamed for his death by his grief-stricken mother, Wendy. She begins to resent Mark, not showing up to his birthday and eventually isolating herself. As Mark and Stephen tumble through different doorways, they find themselves standing during the fateful night where Mark worked for his old CO Bushman. He was tasked with raiding an Egyptian tomb. Bushman changed the plan and called for no witnesses but Mark couldn't live with that and he tried to take everyone away but it didn't work. For Mark, he was badly injured and crawled inside the tomb. As one final act of mercy, under the statue of Khonshu, he looks set to shoot himself, until Khonshu speaks up. The god manipulates him and encourages Mark to choose life and serve as his candidate. These flashbacks continue, diving back to see Mark and Steven both sharing each other's mind. A big reveal then ensues as we find out that Steven Grant isn't the true occupier of this body, it's Mark. Steven was made up as a way of combating the abuse he succumbed to from his mother. His simple life was all a facade, and even believed that his mother was still alive. She's not, as it turns out. Leading Stephen to begin spiraling out of control. Stephen ends up with Dr. Grant in his office again, and he even phones home to show the harsh truth that Wendy is dead. The truth is, this all happened a while back and Mark never attended her funeral. Instead, he stood outside and eventually walked away. Choked by grief, anger and a whole cocktail of different emotions, Mark regressed back to Stephen as a way of dealing with his emotions. Stephen speaks plainly to Mark, telling him it's not his fault and he shouldn't blame himself for what happened to his brother. As they finally make it back to the boat, given it's come close to the gates of Osiris. Tarit apologizes to Mark and Stephen. The unbalanced souls of the Duet are coming for them now. As the souls begin coming aboard, a big scuffle ensues before Stephen tumbles off the boat in a bid to save Mark. Unfortunately, he turns to stone and is lost. In doing so, Mark's soul is balanced and he finds himself in the field of reeds, 